we're going to introduce two important properties that some linear transformations have. Those are the properties of being one-to-one -one and onto. You perhaps recognize these terms from elsewhere in your study of mathematics. After we recap the definitions, we'll prove a basic theorem involving one-to-one -one transformations and the kernel of a transformation. We'll look at some examples and then we'll extend that theorem. There are links in the description to relevant videos if you find yourself needing to review any of these topics. So if we have a linear transformation t from a vector space v to a vector space w, we say that t is one to one if it maps distinct vectors in v two distinct vectors in W. So there are no two distinct vectors in V that map to the same vector in W. That's what it means to be one to one. We say that T is onto if every vector in W is the image of at least one vector in V. So we may say that every vector in W is hit or mapped into by some vector in V. That's what it means for T to be onto. We may say that it maps V onto W. Let's look at some diagrams that may help clarify these definitions. This is a diagram of a one-to-one -one transformation. Distinct vectors in V we see are mapped to distinct vectors in W. Whereas in this example, we see the transformation is not one-to-one. -one. For example, this vector and this vector are mapping to the same vector in W, so the transformation is not preserving distinctness. We also have these two vectors that are mapping to the same vector in W. And note, in this one-to-one -one transformation, there could be many other vectors in W that are not getting mapped to. That would not change the fact that it is a one-to-one -one transformation. Transformation. It preserves distinctness, so it's one-to-one. -one. In order to not be one-to-one, -one, we need a situation like this, where at least two vectors are mapping to the same vector in the codomain. Here is how we may represent an onto transformation. The domain V is mapped onto entirely the codomain W. Every single vector in the codomain is the image of at least one vector in the domain V. So you may notice being onto is the same as the range of the transformation T being equal to the codomain. That's another way to say it. A transformation is onto if its range equals its codomain. On the other hand, if a transformation is not onto, that looks more like this. The domain V is mapped into some subspace of W, and that's the range of the transformation. There are vectors outside of the range that are in W that aren't getting hit by any vectors in V. In this case, the range range is not equal to W, instead it's some smaller subspace of W. Now before we look at examples, let's prove this little theorem, establishing an equivalence between a linear transformation being one-to-one -one and having the zero space as its kernel. The first direction probably feels pretty intuitive. Of course, if a transformation is one-to-one, -one, the only vector that can map to the zero vector is the zero vector itself, and so that's the only thing in the kernel. The details are here. If t is one-to-one, -one, well, we know that t of zero equals zero because linear transformations map the zero vector to the zero vector. And since t is one-to-one, -one, there can't be any other vector in the domain other than the zero vector that maps to zero because that would violate the property of being one-to-one. -one. And so the kernel of the transformation can only contain that single zero vector that gets mapped to zero. And so indeed being one-to-one implies that the transformation has the zero space as its kernel. I don't think the other direction feels quite as obvious, but it is similarly easy. For this direction, we will assume that the kernel is the zero space, so it only contains the zero vector. Now, we'll take two vectors, u and v, from the domain v, with u not equal to v. So we're taking distinct vectors from that vector space. I should quickly mention, if the domain space v happens to be the zero space, in which case it's not possible to take two distinct vectors from it, then the transformation with it as the domain has to be one-to-one. -one. That's because if our domain only contains the zero vector, well, the zero vector gets mapped to the zero vector, and there's no other vector that could also map to that 
to violate being one-to-one. So a transformation with the zero vector as the domain has to be one-to-one. Nothing else is possible. But moving on, assuming we can take two distinct vectors from the vector space, since they're distinct, certainly u minus v is not equal to zero. And so their image is not equal to zero either, because the only vector whose image is zero is zero, because we've assumed the kernel only contains zero. So since u minus v isn't zero, its image is not zero either, but then by properties of linearity, we can split that up into t of u minus t of v. So if the image of u minus v isn't zero, then the image of u minus the image of v is not zero either, and hence the image of u is not equal to the image of v. And so we've shown that if two vectors in the domain are distinct, their images in the codomain must be distinct as well. So by definition, t is one-to-one. -one. And so we've proven that a linear transformation is one-to-one -one if and only if its kernel is the zero space. Let's go ahead and look at some examples now. The linear operator on r squared that rotates each vector about the origin through an angle theta is both one-to-one -one and onto. Clearly, it's one-to-one -one because if we take distinct vectors like u and v and rotate them through an angle theta, well, their images will be distinct vectors also. And it's onto because given any vector in the plane, we could imagine the vector that results from a rotation of negative theta and if we put that vector through the transformation, we would arrive at the original given vector. So every vector in the plane is the image of some other vector in the plane under the rotation transformation. On the other hand, the transformation from r cubed to r cubed, which projects points onto the xy plane, is neither one to one nor onto. So this projection just makes the z coordinate zero. That way the point is sent to the xy plane. It's clearly not one to one because given some point in the xy plane, any two points on the vertical line passing through it will get projected on to that same point in the plane. And it's not onto because the codomain is r cubed, but any point in r cubed which doesn't lie on the xy plane is certainly not going to be the image of any vector in r cubed because the image of everything under this transformation is on the xy plane. Note that if we changed the codomain to r squared and changed how we define the transformation to accommodate that, then it would be onto. Certainly every point in the xy plane, every point in r squared, is the image of some point under this transformation. But with r cubed as the codomain, it is not onto. Another simple example that's one-to-one -one and onto is the transpose transformation. This takes us from the vector space of m by n matrices and sends us to the vector space of n by m matrices. And again, we're just talking about the transpose operation here. So clearly it's one-to-one, -one. we can use our previously proven theorem to verify that. With these vector spaces, the zero vector is the zero matrix, and the only matrix whose transpose is a zero matrix is the zero matrix. So the kernel of this transformation just contains the zero matrix. You should look at this notation as just representing the zero matrix of whatever dimension is appropriate. Since it's only the zero matrix whose transpose is the zero matrix, that's the only matrix in the kernel. Since the kernel only contains the zero vector, that means that the transformation has to be one-to-one -one by that theorem we previously proved. And it's easy to see that this transformation is onto because given any matrix from the codomain, its transpose is in the domain, and the image of that transpose is just the original matrix, since the transpose of a transpose just undoes each other. The zero transformation, generally speaking, is neither one-to-one -one nor onto. If v and w are any two vector spaces, then the transformation which just maps every vector from the domain into the zero vector of the codomain is certainly not one-to-one -one because every vector in the domain gets mapped to the same vector in the codomain, so it definitely violates being one to one, except in the case where v is the zero space. In that case, there's only one vector in the domain, and so it would be one to one. Certainly, the zero transformation is not onto either 
unless the codomain is the zero space, but otherwise it contains all sorts of vectors, and the only one that's getting hit is the zero vector. So the zero transformation, generally speaking, is not onto. Here's a linear transformation, which is one-to-one, -one, but not onto. This transformation just takes any polynomial of degree up to n and multiplies it by x, thus sending it to the vector space of polynomials of degree up to n plus 1. First, let's show that this is one-to-one. -one. It's certainly one-to-one -one because if P and Q, for example, are distinct polynomials from the domain, well, they must differ in at least one coefficient. But if they differ in at least one coefficient, then their images under this transformation must also differ in at least one coefficient. For example, if their coefficients differ in the x term, the linear one, then their coefficients will differ in the x squared terms once we look at their images. So certainly this transformation maps distinct vectors in the domain to distinct vectors in the codomain, and so it is one-to-one. -one. Now, to show that it's not onto, just consider any polynomial with a constant. Any polynomial with a non-zero constant can't possibly be the image of any other polynomial under this transformation, because this transformation, by its definition, is going to hit every term with an x. Thus, there will be no constants in any image of this transformation. So any polynomial in the codomain with a non-zero constant is not going to get hit by the transformation, hence it is not onto. Finally, with a couple additional conditions, we can extend the theorem from the beginning of the video. If V and W are finite dimensional vector spaces with equal dimensions, then the following statements are equivalent for any linear transformation T from V to W. T is one to one, the kernel of T is the zero space, and T is onto. All of these things are equivalent. Now, we already proved that A and B are equivalent, so all that remains is to prove either that A and C are equivalent, or that B and C are equivalent. Either would suffice to establish the theorem. We'll prove that B and C are equivalent. This proof is going to rely on the dimension theorem for linear transformations. I'll leave a link in the description to my lessons going over that. Getting into the proof, like we said, we only need to show that B and C are equivalent. So let's begin by assuming B and showing that C is true. We're assuming the kernel is the zero space. Thus, the nullity of our transformation must equal zero. By the dimension theorem, rank plus nullity equals the dimension of the domain space, V. So in this case, rank plus zero equals the dimension of the domain space, V. In which case, we just have that the rank is equal to the dimension of the domain space. But that's equal to the dimension of the codomain, W. Thus, the range of T, we know that's a subspace of W, we've previously proven that, so the range of T is a subspace of W that has the same dimension as W. Remember, by definition, the rank of a linear transformation is the dimension of its range. Hence, since the rank actually equals the dimension of the codomain, the range is a subspace of W with the same dimension as W, and so we have that the range must equal W. The only way a subspace can have the same dimension as the containing space is if the subspace actually is the whole space. Since the range is equal to the codomain, of course, by definition, the transformation is onto. Every vector in the codomain is getting mapped to by at least one vector in the domain. Next, we need to assume that T is onto and show that forces the kernel to be the zero space. That direction proceeds in a similar manner, again using the dimension theorem. So we assume our transformation is onto, hence the range is equal to the codomain, and thus the rank of the transformation, which again is the dimension of the range, the rank must equal the dimension of the codomain, because the range equals the codomain. Of course, the dimension of the codomain is the same as the dimension of the domain. That was part of the hypothesis of the theorem. So the rank is equal to the dimension of the domain. By the dimension theorem, the rank plus the nullity must equal the dimension of the domain. But if the rank is the dimension of the domain, then the nullity 
must just equal zero. Otherwise, this equation would not be true. So the nullity is zero, but the only way that's possible is if the kernel is the zero space. Remember, the nullity is the dimension of the kernel, so if the nullity is zero, the kernel must be the zero space, and thus the equivalence is established. So if we have a linear transformation between finite dimensional vector spaces of the same dimension, that transformation being one-to-one, -one, having the zero space as its kernel, and being onto are all equivalent. That's a little bit about one-to-one -one and onto linear transformations. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos, original music, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching.